All right, so I want to talk a little bit about, because I don't get on here and talk as much, so I want to answer a couple of questions. Uh, here comes Gabon. He wants to sit on my lap, so <laughs> he has to be part of the videos. All right, come here, little man. Come be part of the YouTube channel. He hears me talking, and he wants to come home and be part of it. So uh, a common question I get is, you know, what was my favorite Olympia that I competed in? And there were a lot, and as you see with this room, there's a ton, you know? Can you see this picture behind me or no? Can you see this or no? Uh, no. Okay. I'll take a picture of it. Well, all right, we'll flash the picture, but uh, that was 2013. It was my last one. I'm actually looking at that back there, but, uh, you know, I always mention that was one of my favorite Mr. Olympias because I felt less pressure of, of certain things. So, you know, there's been so many different looks, and obviously your first one is a big one, 99. Uh, I was training in Massachusetts, which I'm actually going to talk about the second part of this video. But, uh, you know, that was exciting because I made it for the Olympia for the first time. Uh, 2001 was amazing because I felt very confident going into that show. I stood next to Ronnie Coleman the year prior on the European tour when a lot of the other guys from the Olympia didn't go after the Mr. Olympia. And I was able to finish second to him at two shows. And that's when I really got to compare with him and, and said, wow, you know, with a year of training, I think I can you know, do some damage against him. Little did everyone know, 2001, I showed up and controversially could have won that show. Uh, Ronnie was slightly off and I was probably in my best shape of all time, uh, arguably. Uh, well, up to that date I was. And uh, then that kind of started my run with all the Arnold Classic victories and then of course moving to uh, all the Olympias, uh, which used to be at Mandalay Bay. And I can't eat, he doesn't want to. He, he wants to stay with me. So, uh, you know, thinking back, man, like, 03 was a hype year. You know, Ronnie had finished less in 2002 of what he was capable of. And people thought, okay, this is his downslide. Gunter beat him at the show of strength after the Mr. Olympia history, kind of, if you look back. So they kind of built that show in 2003 on based on myself, Ronnie Coleman, Gunter Schleierkamp, and... Of course, Ronnie won, and I was second. Gunter felt, I think, felt a fifth or something. But uh, there was just, you know, there was a crazy time. Um, 04 was a battle. 05, you know, was close. 06, of course, winning my first, which was absolutely amazing. But as Dave can attest, it's, you know, he's filming here. It's That was a year where I was very, very confident I was going to win. I actually predicted I would win. Uh, you know, 07 was an off year for me. I was, was in the best, best shape. I was still able to slide through but very controversially against Victor Martinez. 08 being a year I lost uh, to Dexter Jackson. 09 was the massive comeback of, you know, the quad stomp. And that was probably, if I'm going to, you know, actually answer the question in this video, that was probably my favorite Mr. Olympia victory. Why? Uh, a lot of people counted me out. A lot of people never thought I'd come back to do it. I was the first guy in history ever to lose a title a year prior, come back and win it the next year. Uh, no one has ever done that, nor has done it since. Uh, so I kind of rewrote history and that kind of really exploded my career towards the end of my career. I remember I was 36 at the time. So that really kind of was like the transition. I was working on the movie, the Hercules film at that point. So there was a lot of excitement to my career. I was training, I was living part-time in, in Venice, California in Marina Del Rey. So I was training at the Mecca and I was the first Mr. Olympia winner to be out there training like that um, consistently. Uh, so there was a lot of aura around bodybuilding. And if you ask me 10 years later what bodybuilding uh, is like, it's a lot different, man. Not as much excitement. Uh, we had the store at Max Muscle Venice at the time, so it was right two blocks down from Gold's and we we're spending time there and you know we had all the memorabilia people were flying into Venice and coming out and it was kind of like you know that was really when you know things started taking off on the internet we started doing YouTube in 08 and you know in 09 and 10 of course you know we started doing stuff with the magazines muscular development flex you know flex magazine counted me out so I, I switched magazine uh, endorsements and I went over to muscular development for a number of years with Steve Blackman and his crew and we were able to highlight a lot of my successes through there. So, you know, bodybuilding was alive. I came back and swarmed the stage in 2009. So that answers that question. 
Uh, it's never been the same since. We're bringing back what we did back then, which is you know filming stuff for the YouTube, you know, constant with the social media. You guys know I'm super, super active, even being retired, uh, trying to be the guy that kind of leads by example. So to touch upon this Massachusetts versus East Coast, West Coast thing, if you ask Derek Farnsworth, we always train harder on the East Coast, right? Ask Jose Raymond, ask the guys that, you know, are hardcore to the bone. Uh, you know, I was training in Massachusetts, my first Mr. Olympia, um, and then of course moved out after the first Mr. Olympia to Southern California. I lived in Orange County for two years, trained for my, you know, controversial second Mr. Olympia there, uh, 2001, and then I moved to Vegas after that. And of course, Olympia being held in Vegas since 99, gave me the opportunity to train amongst, uh, I think the best facilities in Las Vegas, uh, 24 hour city, Mr. Olympia was here, uh, cost of living, uh, climate, everything was, was kind of clicking, you know, it was kind of considered the Mecca of bodybuilding the new Mecca for some time because, you know, you had Gustavo Bedell, you had Dennis Wolf, you had, um, you know, Sean Ray was here part-time, Dillette was here at a certain point, Flex Wheeler, you know, was on and off here, Chris Cormier lived here on and off, um, Craig Titus, who now, of course, is incarcerated, he was out here. So that, you know, it really became the kind of the hotbed because it was very close to California. The gyms were packed up with Gold's Gyms. Um, and at 24 Hour City, that Gold's Gym Flamingo was a, was a beast of a gym. That's where I was training a lot of the time. Some of the best equipment you've seen out there. And uh, that gave me a huge opportunity. And, and, you know, I like training in Massachusetts, but to further my career truly, and this is important for you people out there, which now, you know, you have the social media really to get more reach. But at the time, it was absolutely necessary for me to be moved closer to the magazines, which Joe Weider moved me to California, just like he did Schwarzenegger. He moved me to California to be closer to Muscle and Fitness and Flex magazines and endorsed the Joe Weider line of products. And without that opportunity, I never would have been able to succeed as much as I did. Joe was a huge mentor for me. Uh, he he kind of gave me that vision and he believed in me. And also he convinced me, hey, you need to be on the West Coast. We want to be able to shoot you year round. I was always in great shape. So I was able to do photo shoots whenever they called. And that's back when they would put the girls in the pictures and run the magazine covers with the girls. So I was doing a lot of stuff for Muscle and Fitness, crossing over to Flex. I had both that opportunity to be in both those features where I wasn't overly big and I was still appealing enough where I wasn't covered in veins and everything else that I could you know, be a crossover for muscle and fitness. So, you know, that's kind of why I moved and, and I, I adapted very well. I remember waking up, you know, the first year, like smiling every day after being in Massachusetts and going through the seasons and the rain and the snow. And when I woke up in California, I'm like, man, this is what I've been dreaming my whole life. You guys, I mean, I can honestly tell you, like my dream, everyone knows like the story where, I went to school to be a cop. My dream was to ride a motorcycle in California. I always admired the, the show Chips, right? It was a show that was on TV and I'm like, man, that's the life living out there. You can ride a motorcycle year round. There's no snow. And listen, don't get me wrong. I'm an East Coast guy at heart, but I knew that because of my lifestyle and going to the gym and training in, in sneakers and shorts and tank tops, like I wanted to be do, do that all year. I used to admire these guys, Sean Ray and Barry DeMay and Gary Stridham and all these guys, Mike Quinn, they were on the beach training and I saw Lee Haney, Rich Gaspari, they were living out here and these guys were training in like the Gold's Gym and these guys were in shorts and tank tops. I'm like, man, how come I have to wear a jacket to go to the gym and I have to wear work boots and then I have to take the work boots off and put on my Atomic sneakers at the time uh, to do my training. Like, why do I have to change my outfit? What These guys get to walk in the gym and they get to have like their outfits on already and they pull up in their Ferraris or their Corvettes or whatever. I'm like, man, I want that lifestyle. So that's why I kind of had that that pipe dream. I moved to California, you know, thankfully being sponsored by Joe Weider. And like, I didn't realize how easy it was to go to the gym and train and how motivated it was. Like you wake up every day and the sun's out. And Dave, you can attest for this. You're standing behind the camera. I mean, you know, I want to do want to tell you a story on here at some point. But, you know, he came here from Montreal and like, with a dream, right? Yeah. And never left. And I don't, I don't know if I could ever go back to the East Coast at this point. 
you know, my whole family's there. I miss my family, but at the same time, like, it's so... You guys, uh, and I'm sure the people that have traveled to sunny California, and, I mean, they've been to Las Vegas, and, man, it's just like when you wake up every day and the sun is out, like, we did this jaywalking this morning, and, man, it's like when I can walk outside, you know, pretty much all year, it does get a little cooler in Vegas sometimes, and obviously the rain does happen, but it's just it's just a different realm, a different positive energy, and... You guys know I'm all about positivity, but that really propelled my career, and I believe that's what made me a better bodybuilder, was I put myself in the right environment, and I took the chance, and trust me, I was really scared. I was super scared to to make the move and be away from my family. Man, am I gonna make it? And I remember when I was like, I left Massachusetts, you know, I was renting a place before I left for $400 a month. To rent a one bedroom apartment in Southern California was $1,400. So I was like in total culture shock. Thank goodness I was making a great salary to move there. But I was like, man, like, am I gonna be able to afford this, right? And I was scared and, and uh, I'm like, man, I gotta be successful in my bodybuilding career. Like what if I don't start winning? And I just finished second to last at my first Mr. Olympia. So I was still like in un untested waters, right? And then I won the night of champions six months later, bought my first home, uh, really just got it started to really like residualize. And I finished eighth at the next Mr. Olympia. So I basically moved up half the pack. And then I went on that tour and finished second to Coleman and won. I think I won like 28 grand over a two week period. And I was like, man, I'm rich, right? Because <laughs> I was to win that kind of money in one shot. It gave me much more opportunity, and I already had bought my house after the night of champions. You know, I went 15 grand there, and I was able to put down money on a house. And that really, really, like, I woke up every day like, man, I own a house out here, and I established a life. And that's all about transition, not having fear of it. So I can honestly tell you guys, like, if you have a dream and you want to chase it, don't use your financial, like, oh, well, I need to be this or that. Take the chance and do it. Like, all of us moved here, like, not being sure or, or you know we didn't necessarily have jobs lined up or whatever i unfortunately had a contract but man like it wasn't i had to perform right so i had a job to do so when i woke up every day at six in the morning and ate my breakfast and trained at seven thirty, go back to the gym at two i made sure i dedicated that time so i wasn't a guy that just took the money and said oh i want to live the lifestyle i actually treated it like a real job i ate my six eight meals a day and I trained double shifts and I was just nonstop. And that's what really made me to what I've become in this office. I mean, all the Arnold wins and Olympias and still to this day doing what I love to do. If you said, Jay, what is your favorite part of the day? Weight training is still a favorite part of my day. I love it so much. I mean, I can't stress to you guys how much satisfaction I, I feel when I leave the gym. And it's not about oh, I have bigger arms or bigger legs or, you know, this less body fat. I just feel a certain way when I go in the gym and I train and I get lost in that weight training session and I leave the gym and I'm like, man, I just feel like energized and I feel like good. I feel accomplished and, you know, and then I can focus on my business and just so many other stresses, guys, that, that really, you know, we all have in life, okay? My dad's not doing super well right now. Um, he's 89. You know, I got a call yesterday that he has pneumonia, and of course that's a concern for me. So, you know, he's all the way back, this six hour flight back to Mass, and I'm like, kind of like, okay, am I gonna have to go back and see him? Because every day is precious, right? So we all have things that tear at us. And, uh, you know, I owe so much credit to my family. I owe so much credit to my friends, so much credit to Joe Weider, people like Ed Connors, and. Um, all my people that sponsored me between muscle tech and and you know my partners that just really just helped me become who I became and became super famous in a fitness arena I'm just so blessed and more importantly the fans the fans that have followed me for 20 plus years the new fans the old fans the fans that that left me because they weren't sure if they were fans anymore and came back you guys are the ones that you guys are the reason I'm here today. So I want to thank everyone out there. Chase your dreams. That's probably, probably the, the segment of this video is like, don't hold back, right? Follow your dreams, follow your passion. Uh, we all are going to have our moments in life that we remember the most. 
But those Olympia victories and which one's my favorite, you know, I mentioned losing and winning. There's a certain place every single one of those shows holds with me and will continue to, you know, build me as a, as a character and continue to, to promote and influence people in a positive manner. So keep watching our videos, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for more.